Hello, everyone. Welcome to Pac-Man World Repack. This is the grand finals of the Any Percent Tournament. Momentarily, we're going to get the races underway, and then we'll get this show on the road. So, over the course of this tournament, we've had a lot of great races. This one, world record holder sunglasses emoji. And then we have Crash K, who has upsetted, I believe it was Psionics halfway through the tournament, and has been doing excellent. Okay, having them start off here in a second. Alright, so, if you're unfamiliar with this game... Great, we're getting the show on the road. All right, so name thing, uh, main things to look for. If you are unfamiliar with this game, uh, we have two moves to look out for, uh, namely the Reveral, and we also have a butt bounce function. Uh, the thing about the butt bounce is that you actually have to think about it in this game compared to the other Pac-Man games. The butt bounce in this game, uh, you have to chain it three times before it becomes at its fastest speed. So you might see some minor optimizations come out from that side. And then for the main thing is we got to worry about the rev rolls. So now if you look at this spin dash kind of move, uh, Pac-Man's running in place and then he just shoots off. So we're going to be using that a lot in this race. Uh, they're going to be using that a lot in this race for fast traversal. It goes up slightly high tiles. Like think of there, uh, think of there being like a staircase, and it goes up one whole thing. If you cut it in half, it kind of just goes up it, kind of like snaps upwards. So that they're definitely going to be using as well. Up bounces for higher reach, so that they don't have to take as many doings as Crash K just did there. They can grab higher ledges. There's going to be a lot of useful uh, maneuvers around the game's collision using the butt bounce for the extra height. You're also going to see that they do this like little flutter jump in the air. That is a uh, new feature added to this game if you're not uh, already familiar with. Uh, this is a remake of a PlayStation 1 game. The flutter jump was a introduction in here. And they can hold a bind in the air to sustain height for about a second, but they can also move in the air with it. So you're going to be seeing that a lot for more precise jumps and even some little time saves here and there. Another thing to look out for is that there's the bosses in this game are going to actually make or break these runs. Uh, Sunglasses is a little bit ahead right now. But you never know how it goes with this game and bosses, much like some of the other world games. Uh, they definitely make a break run with their optimizations involved and just also a little bit of RNG. The game's not heavily RNG based, but some enemy patterns, some boss patterns, actually the first one coming up here in about two levels. You're definitely going to see RNG impact at big time.
So right here, they're using a Chrome Ball power-up. Uh, makes Pac-Man metal, and uh, he sinks in water. And also allows him to kill uh, specific chrome paladin enemies that you wouldn't normally be able to kill otherwise. Uh, this statue that Crash Cage just broke, uh, it's a statue, much like any statue at the end of every level. However, for some reason, uh, in the old version, this used to be like a little fortress house type thing that you'd actually have to destroy. Here's a statue, uh, but unfortunately we can't bring it through normal means. So instead of bottling a whole like little mini fortress, they just reuse the statue that can only be broken with the cannon. Namco. Namco, you got some explaining to do. Why? All right, so now we're coming up with one of the harder stages in the game. Uh, both casual and in a speedrun, this stage is heavily based around cycles and uh, having just, just really good movement, it's really easy to get hit by one cannon or an enemy block your way in a very uncomfortable way to try to navigate. The ramps in this game, especially, are like a little finicky. This is one of the stages that seriously demonstrates that. Yeah. So you're going to be seeing them skip some cycles using the elevator pads. They're going to revel on them to move them, and then they'll make long, uh, longer jumps to avoid uh, more just sitting on it. Because obviously you want to jump past it, you don't want to just sit on it. Oh, jeez. Sunglasses is going to get really close with that uh, cycle with the lid of the... Uh, Cannon here. Uh, also, keep in mind if you're just stopping by, this is grand finals of Pac Man World Repack any percent uh, for this year's tournament. Ooh, that was brutal. Yeah, that can often happen too with uh, the platforms. Uh, this is a best out of three. So, this is grand finals. Uh, Sunglasses is currently in winners. Crash K is currently in losers. If Crash K pulls us back, uh, he's going to be resetting the bracket, and then we're going to have to do another best of three at some other point. But for now, uh, this is going to be best of three tournament. First of two. Between world record holder uh, sunglasses and currently the second place runner up in the tournament, Crash K. Who is currently getting demolished by some of these really disgusting cycles. Okay, so HMS win bag. Uh, so first thing to note with this fight is that there's this whole section up front where he's just shooting. This is pretty simplistic. Uh, just moving in and out of the Z-axis for uh, to navigate around these barrels. The first actual phase of this fight is completely scripted. If you know the patterns, you should be good to go. The second part of this fight where uh, after you get down to half health, there's a second phase. A lot more intense uh, and a lot more random. It's very easy to just lose way too much time on the second phase of this fight. So hopefully, both these runners get good luck here. Now, if you're familiar with the first game, uh, the first version of this game, you might uh, remember that you can bounce back several cannons to do se uh, to do more damage out of just one shot. Uh, that's not in this version. That was completely patched out. And also, you're going to see them uh, tend to avoid fruit, and especially the little tokens that you might see enemies drop or you might see around the world. Uh, namely, because when the game tallies up all this at the end of the game, at the end of each stage, I'm sorry. Uh, you lose points for each one. And especially the tokens, namely, uh, force you to play a slot machine. There is no way to skip this. Uh, and it's a really big deal. And it adds up really fast. I don't remember the exact calculation, but it takes a couple of seconds per token. 
out of the end of the out of the end level sequence. Spirits are not as big of a deal, but the more you avoid, the more it uh, the less it dominoes. Okay, sunglasses is done with HMS Windbag. Uh, still anybody's game. We still got a whole lot of game to play. So, stay tuned. Crash K is actually not too far behind right now. He's only got three hits left on HMS Windbag. Make that two. Okay, so next we're going to the Ruins area. Uh, on sunglasses screen. You can technically do uh, the ruins and the space world in any order you choose. This is the order that uh, sunglasses uses, and I'm pretty sure most people do. Nice job, Crash Guy. So, uh, the gimmick with this stage is that there's a lot more hazards. Uh, more like traps. There's pressure plates, things fall, things like those skulls. They drop rocks, they move other gizmos. It's a lot of just understanding how to navigate around these uh really ludicrous obstacles there's just way too many sunglasses playing it a little bit safe there don't blame them ah missed a little time save where you can uh rev roll on like the wooden plank as it's falling down so crash k is opting to go to the space world so here we go so we're seeing a route divergence uh, the thing with the space world is that it's a lot more, obviously there's more obstacles too, but they generally seem to be a lot more tame, uh, in a casual setting, the space world tends to be a lot more forgiving than the, uh, ruins world. Uh, and there's also a lot of lives. So if Crash K opts to, um, I'm not sure if they will, uh, you can pick up a lot more lives and safeties, uh, safety health here. Really all depends. There's a lot of flexibility in the routing for this. So, uh, eventually they will start to merge back together. Uh, after they finish the first three worlds, the routes will merge back together. And then they could opt to go either to the pipes or to the clown world. It's really up to them. Nice job, both of them finishing the first level of the respective worlds. Uh, the mines levels are, the ruins levels are a lot longer than the space worlds. Uh, especially the second one, Sunglasses is coming up to, which is honestly kind of like a glued mess of two levels. One being a cut level named Cookie Crypt, I believe. Uh, so there's only two levels in the ruins world, but there's, th there's a whole three in the space world, much like every other world. So even if Crash K finishes this level, just keep that in mind that Crash K will also eventually have to come here and it's not, uh, he would not be ahead unless Sunglasses makes severe mistakes. But so far, Sunglasses has been playing pretty steadily. Uh, Crash K 2 has not been playing too bad, uh, though a little bit more deaths coming from his side. Oh, that is brutal. So that's what we were talking about the ramps earlier. Uh, the ramps in this game, uh, I'm not sure what exactly it is. There seems to be no real concept of actual momentum in this. It just seems to be uh, you get onto the rev roll, onto the uh, ramp, and then it kind of just forces you a specific way. But sometimes how they force you uh, to go up the ramp does not exactly work the way they're supposed to. We aren't 100% sure why, but you see there, it's supposed to be a ramp that's supposed to take you straight to that platform and crash get ahead to flutter jump to actually live. Nice, Crash K skipping that pack out here. Uh, instead of riding this elevator up, you can kind of just bounce around the collision. It's not too bad. Uh, you might have noticed if you were looking at Crash K's screen a moment ago, uh, there's this weird lag that comes when you get hit so basically when the game when you get hit the game puts pac-man in this little getting hurt animation the problem with the animation is that it also happens when he's airborne and because of that you just kind of mid jump 
go into that animation and then you drop like a rock and that can seriously screw up uh jumps and uh, any potential um i guess time savers where you try to go unintentionally around certain uh things and get hit by a random hitbox sometimes that can happen so it's really easy to die while you're airborne Okay. So now, uh, on Sunglasses screen, uh, they're on their way to Anubis Rex, the second main boss in the game. And, uh, it's kind of a doozy. It's nothing too crazy. The first phase, it's going to be a first-person perspective from this mummy chasing you. And then the second phase is where the real meat of this, uh, boss is. So just dodging these spears with uh, really wonky hitboxes. So you kind of have to really memorize the level in its entirety, this first section, as obviously if you go too fast, you you can't really see what's ahead of you. <laughs> so it's definitely a lot of knowledge of where the spear locations are, the lava pit that's up here. And then now we can begin the main part of the fight. So, there's four helipads on the ground, and you have to use all four of them to open up Anubis Rex's hands. And then you open up his hands, and then that jewel in the middle, that heart crystal encased in that like, little magic barrier, uh, breaks out, and then you roll into it. It's easy on paper, but as the fight advances, there's a lot more issues that come about with enemies on screen, the platforms disappearing, and uh, attacks that come from both the lava, like that, and Anubis himself. So it'll be interesting for sure to see how safe uh, Sunglasses decides to play it. On Crash Case side of the screen, we have the other boss that's going on. Uh, this is King Galaxian. There's a whole shmup section. This is the whole gimmick of this fight is a shmup. So we have the first section where you're just going through on your way to King Galaxian. A lot of Galaga flying around, asteroids. Uh, you can pick up a lot of these health, uh, a lot of these fruits for more lives. Obviously, though, that is slower, so Crash Kid's going to be avoiding them. Uh, then there's also power-ups of the power pellets that are three bullet shots, uh, which they will likely be using for later in the fight to uh, shotgun, it's called, for the boss, where all three of them hit uh, the boss simultaneously. The actual King Galaxian fight itself, though, has four eyes that all need to be hit for, uh, and each time you hit an eye, it will advance to the next phase. If you're familiar with uh, the second Pac-Man World game, it's a lot like the Mega Whale fight in that game, where you have the four propellers. And uh, keep in mind, for all these boss fights, there are no checkpoints. If you die at any point mid-boss fight, you will just run into a whole mess of having to do the whole boss fight again. These pre-level fights are different story, though. There are checkpoints for these pre-level sections, but during the fight itself, you are not going to have the luxury of taking deaths. So it's really important that they... While, yes, they got to go fast, they also do need to make sure that they don't lose minutes <laughs> due to dying. So congratulations to Sunglasses for the first try in Anubis. Going to be using these fast travel pods, or these like little fast travel platforms, to get to the Space World. And now they're going to be starting their section, their Space World uh, section. Wow, brain, it's not working. So here's the actual King Galaxian fight. Notice that there's a whole, the four eyes. And then there's the Stinger phase. So after you shoot each eye, the stinger phase is going to initiate, and then it turns into like a mini bullet hell. The main thing here is draining the health bar of the stinger. However, later in the fight, there's going to be a power pellet. There it is, which they're going to use to shoot down the other eye faster after this. So now they're going to shotgun the eye, and then next phase starts. Welcome on in, everybody coming in from Speed Gaming 4. Uh, this is a Pac-Man World Repack Any% Percent Tournament that's been running for about a little over two months. Uh, currently, we're doing Grand Finals, Sunglasses versus Crash K. Uh, two very talented runners 
going through the game. They're doing slightly different routes right now. One's going through one world, uh, one finished the ruins world, one finished, uh, one is working on finishing the space world. This game is dope. If you do want to play it, it's on uh, all major platforms right now. Highly recommend you pick it up. If for any other reason, then hey, tell Namco that we want more of these types of games. Nice job to Crash K for finishing the King Galaxian fight. So now, because they split paths, now they're going to be doing the opposite side of the first hub world. Uh, Sunglasses still has a lead, but it's not too heavy of a lead. You may notice uh, two things. You may notice that all these other characters are in cages. Uh, in the original game, you're actually forced to unlock all of these, uh, all your friends. They're uh, the characters that get stolen or kidnapped at the start of the game. In the original game, you were forced to rescue all of them. But in this game, you do not actually have to rescue any of them to beat the game. Uh, there is one serious thing, though, to consider. The last boss in this game, Talkman. Uh, is extremely brutal and extremely punishing. Uh, if you die, depending on where you are in the fight, you can lose upwards of like three minutes. But if you do save the friends, you do get health upgrades for them. Uh, you, not health upgrades. You do get health refills from them if your health goes low enough and you live. Which is something to consider if you're racing this game because you can go the riskier route of not saving anybody and it would obviously be faster but if you do want to go out of your way to save somebody saving one or two people if you're talking in fights not that uh pristine might not be a bad idea uh both these runners grand finals both of them very experienced in the talkman fight and in the game in general so they are not going to be saving any friends as far as i'm aware the fastest friends that they'd be saving would be the puka in crazy cannonade which was the first world uh which was the third level that they both played Oh my goodness, that worked. And then also uh, Professor Pack, I believe, in this space world that they're in. But they're both very good at this game and probably won't be going for any more. Um, if you were going to be racing the game, though, those would be the two that you would be going for if you needed it. Okay, sunglasses turn in the King Galaxian fight. Remember, it's just kind of like a little bit of a bullet hell shmup. Uh, first part is the Galaga. And then the second part will be the actual King Galaxian fight itself. Uh, you may notice sunglasses is playing on the Japanese version. Um, while the game is still relatively new, there's very little text in this game, and it's all instant speed. So that has no bearing on any kind of text differences or speeds or any changes in the actual game. Unlike the actual, uh, the first version of this game on the PlayStation 1. Where there's oodles of differences in that.
one thing also, if you're looking at Crash Game Screen, uh, the way it swimming works kind of works almost like a like a 2D Mario game. Uh, for some reason, despite the fact that in the original game you had swim up and swim down buttons, uh, in this game they've opted for the kind of flap swing, uh, the flap swimming. Um, for no real discernible reason, it's kind of bizarre if you ask me. Um, but however, the th important thing to note about that is that swimming up is faster, even if you're going straight and not going just straight on a uh, horizontal. It is still faster to mash the swimming button as it's just faster, period. Now Crash Gate is on his way to doing Anubis Rex. Now keep in mind, uh, after uh, sunglasses is done here and after crash K is done here uh, There's gonna be another split path that you can take you could either go to the uh, Factory levels or you can go to the clown levels um, Most people tend to go for the clown levels. Um, it's not really a big deal to, uh, which one you do much like in the case of the ruins level and in the uh, Space levels, it's really up to you So Crash K going to the space levels, uh, I'm very interested to see what these two runners decide, since they definitely picked different ones for this one. And Sunglasses is going to the clown levels. So now for the clown levels, uh, these are the most precise platforming stages, I'd say. A lot of rotating platforms, flying enemies, a um, lot of moving parts of the stages. Later on, you're going to see hammers, more of these moving blocks. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts in these stages, and it all culminates in the most tight platforming stages, other than the final world, maybe? No, I'd say this one still has the most tight flat platforming. Yep, that was weird. Yeah, you can rev roll all up those stairs. I'm not sure why sunglasses actually bonked there. Crash K almost done with Anubis. Good thing it's so far been deathless. Hopefully it stays that way. Okay. I don't like watching people play Anubis Rex. It has come to my attention that I feel that way. <laughs> it's so it's so unnerving. So this is gonna be a best two out of three because it's grand finals decent runtime for this category is somewhere in the 50s like sub one uh currently the world records held by sunglasses right there with i believe a 51 ox let me double check that real quick i want to say 08 no it's actually 51 30 uh for load removal for rta that's 53 39 currently the two timers on screen are loadless timings as that's what we use for the pc timing Let's see what uh, level Crash K ops to go to. <laughs> He's going to be going to the factory levels. No, that's the space levels. <laughs> yeah, no problem. If anybody has any questions about the game, I'd gladly answer it. So, 
So yeah, Crash K is also going to the clan stages. So now we're more lined up on uh, to tell who's ahead. Uh, since after these two worlds, there's not going to be any more branching paths. For those of you just dropping by, uh, this is Pac-Man World Repack. It's a remake of the PlayStation 1 Pac-Man World game. Uh, we have Grand Finals going on, best two out of three. Uh, this is still game one, so we still got a long, uh, we still got a long race to go. Uh, currently, Sunglasses is in the lead by give or take a full level. Uh, not too far. Uh, this is still anybody's game, as there's a lot of things in this uh, game that can kill you pretty easily. And also, bosses are a big deal as well. The Anubis fight is much harder in the original version. In the original version, uh, there's only platforms for where the rev pads are, as opposed to the whole, uh, the whole long rectangle that you have. So imagine that there's just this path in the middle, and then there's only two pillars where the helipads are, and that's what the arena looks like for the first game. Now, it's mentioned that the original version of this game is really jank let's put it so which definitely compiles the problem that's a interesting strap from sunglasses i did not know you could do that you know so they're like even like about a level ahead uh in the level sunglasses about to go to in uh go into spin uh spin dizzy uh, there is a lot of rotating platforms in this stage that you can actually just skip. Uh, essentially, switches move parts to give you access to these platforms, but in addition to that, they also start making the platforms spin. But if you skip hitting the switch by doing some clever platforming like this, you just don't need to make these platforms spin, which makes them way easier. I believe in the original game, all these platforms here wouldn't be spinning either if you did the skip. It's it's the same kind of skip. I believe so. It's been a minute. There's also a little bit more clever uh, bouncing on collision here. To skip even more switches, like so. Sunglass is doing a great job demonstrating that. Oh, I think uh, he got caught on an invisible wall there. Whoops. So now here, uh, there's an original skip. There's a skip in the original game where you can skip all these hammers, and we'd uh, shout out Sky. But unfortunately, we cannot do that in here. So we'll just be avoiding this pack chain to just save a little bit of time. This is the easily the um, I'd say the trickiest world to get around uh, just due to how many uh, precise platforming there is. How much precise platforming there is. Crash King going to be going for the skip as well. And he missed it. It's a little bit. It's really tricky because you can't see the best luck that you got is for the rotating uh, stovetops. But otherwise, it's really difficult. I don't blame Crash K at all for opting to just use metal and go through it. It's way simpler and it's not that much slower. Alright, so Clown Pre. Uh, Clown Pre is not... It's pretty simple, all things considered. Uh, it's not a complex racing segment. But this, it's really easy to mess up and fall off. Essentially, there's going to be a meter on the right-hand side that allows you to... Uh, over time, charge up a boost, which you're going to be seeing the runners use extensively, especially for uh, straightaways.
And the main goal here is just to beat the clowns. However, uh, a decent time for actually like doing this fast, uh, I guess, would be around 136 on the timer, 136 seconds on the timer. Uh, I'd say is probably what these two are going to be aiming for, if I had to guess. Uh, however, if they get under 140, that's still pretty good, all things considered. They're also going to be grabbing these uh, pack, uh, power pellets, which both uh, make you not get banged around by the clowns as easy. And also, you move faster, I believe. So they're definitely going to be taking advantage of that. And you can kind of, and being able to bash these clowns around without getting bonked yourself is really good because getting these things out of your way is a really big difference. These things are really annoying. And if you remember, uh, if you played the first game, you probably remember the nightmare that this was because uh, it was extremely slippery. Thank goodness that they changed that. So it's not nearly as cumbersome to navigate around these turns. And also the uh, bombs on the road, if you get hit by them without the power pellet, uh, not only do they stop you for a little bit, but you also take damage. But with the power pellet, you can just, ooh, boy, with the power pellet, you can also just plow right through them. No problem. Get them out of your way. Over here on the right, Crash K making his way through Spin Dizzy, doing a great job uh, getting the skip to not have all these platforms start turning. Uh, weird stovetop hitbox. That was strange. <laughs> Sunglasses coming up on the final stretch here of Clown Prix. Uh, there's a lot of turns in this, but it's not too, too bad. Hopefully you can squeeze in a little bit of extra boosts. Excellent job, Crash K. Getting over those. Oh, wow. He gets a 129. Well, okay. 129 entering the cutscene. Very good. Okay, so I guess this is a lot faster than I thought it was. Yeah, this is kind of funny. You had, it would be faster if you did a straight shot, but there's like two tokens in there and a bunch of fruit. So we actually, so taking the time to go around it is actually the faster way. Crash guy is still keeping up in his own right. Just a level behind. Just need to do clown free. That's not so bad. He's doing a very good job of keeping up. He had a little bit of a rough start at the. Uh, he had a little bit of a rough start in the first couple of levels, and that might have been uh, what kind of got him to this point. But he's been doing a good job uh, saving, making up a lot of that time, and keeping up with sunglasses. He's definitely not out of the running yet. Okay, so. Uh, the factory levels so we're gonna go here and just uh think with like the philosophy of the mines of the ancient ruins levels and just put just put stuff everywhere if it has a hitbox put it there oh there's already three hitboxes there put another one put two more after that too there's just things that damage you all the time and uh damage boosting in this game is not exactly fast just due to the animation that you take uh, just due to the uh, hurt animation Pac-Man has. But we're going to be doing some jumps around some of these corners just to save a little bit of time here and there. But as... Whoa, what was that? Okay, so these spark plug thingies. Weird hitboxes. Uh, arguably worse than they were in uh, 98. Yeah, they're a really big pain. Shouts the sunglasses, taking the time to just kill it. I have anger. I don't blame him. I would too. But yeah. So it only really... Uh, they just keep going nuts with this idea that uh, put steam everywhere to kind of damage you and then put more of these spark plug enemies in very inconvenient areas. So it's just really, really easy to die. So... 
well, they are going to be trying to go fast and cut as many corners as possible. They also just have to be aware of their health and enemy patterns because these are a little random. So, yes, they can go certain routes, but if their health is too low, then they might risk dying pretty easily. Crash K getting a 133 Clown Prix. Only like three or four seconds slower than what Sunglasses got because he got like a high 129. Very good. Again, he's just doing a great job of maintaining his pace. Not trying to fall too far behind. Around. Oh, he got a couple fruit. <laughs> but that's not, that's not a big deal. The main thing to worry about there is the tokens. Because those cost seconds. So now here, Sunglasses is going to be taking this metal. Uh, he's going to try to carry this all the way to the water section coming up, just to not have to avoid slowly falling down. <gasps> so you just get to drop like a rock. Excellent done. Excellent. Well done by Sunglasses. <laughs> Now, there's something that Sunglasses might go for here where you skip the checkpoint and take a death abuse. Yeah, so we need to grab, we need to hit this switch here, and we have to go all the way back to go to this platform that's dropping right here. However, you could just die if you didn't grab the checkpoint right there to just warp back there. It saves a few seconds. That's another thing to worry about. If you, for whatever reason, uh, take a lot of damage and you might not have the lives to expend on something like that, that's kind of important. Okay, so the last level of the factory levels. This one is actually really, really short because remember where I said the uh, you needed the friends to actually beat the game? In this stage, most of the level is designated to getting the key to save said friend. Uh, but because we don't, we'll just abandon him. We don't need him. We'll abandon Pack Kid and the rest of the new Pack family, minus Puka, because the Puka's cool still. Uh, cause they're all frauds, cause Namco did this. There he is. And now we're just gonna not really bother with most of this, cause the main thing that you'd be doing is you'd be getting a bell to get access to the key, and the bell is, like, way farther down the level. But, because we don't need a friends, who cares? Who cares? Alright. Time for... Chrome Keeper. Okay, so now the main thing about this boss is that you use the metal to get onto this heap, onto these heat pipes to stop, um, you use metal to get onto these heat pipes to, uh, bump into them. However, unlike all the actual chrome enemies in this game, you don't need the chrome, uh, to actually get damage, uh, to actually damage him. So, you just... 
go over there, smack him. You can go through both hits of the phase without the uh, without the need of the chrome uh, chrome pellet. But remember, there is no checkpoints in these fights. So if you do die, you're losing a lot of time. Okay, nice. Sunglass is doing good. Is that chrome ball gonna stay there? I think he wanted to grab it before the cutscene started. I'm not sure if it's still gonna be there. Oh, it does stay there. Okay. And that should be the fight. Okay. That was that was actually a little little scary. Awesome job. Crash K going for that same skip. Nice job. Both these runners are doing a great job. None of them falling really far behind. Crash K has been consistently behind, but they're both playing very well. Crash K had a little bit of a rough start, but they're still both like keeping up with each other. And that's great. Sunglasses heading towards the mansion levels. Uh, they're called the mansion levels, but only one of these levels were uh, actually looked like a mansion, and uh, that was retconned anyways. So, that was retconned for this game. Before it didn't. Before they were all uh, graveyard themed. So, there's a lot of, um, uh, it's not as precise as the Funhouse levels, but it's kind of up there. Uh, there's a lot more death perception issues in these stages, and a lot more enemies than the clown stages. We do have two skips coming up in one of the later stages. But, as of right now, this is just tight platforming, little time savers like that. Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, these bats have, uh, really, really huge hurt boxes, so you might see them abuse them to, uh, get another bounce out without it looking like it should have worked at all. That's just kind of the nature of it here. True, Nacho, this game does have good music. This song is pretty good. Personally, I still prefer how the version on the original soundtrack sounded, but by all means, if you like this version more, more power to you. It's still pretty good. It's a jam. Crash K on his way to Chrome Keeper. Let's see what he does for the extra phases. The safe way to play the Chrome Keeper fight is that if you you don't hop onto the heat pipes without Chrome, you just do both hits uh, with the Chrome power up when you eventually get it. But the problem is the weight. Okay, he's doing a lot of what Sunglasses was doing. So he's going to hit him, jump off, grab the Chrome power up, keep the Chrome power up going into the next stage, and then go for it. I uh, don't think that's going to work, though. I think the Chrome Power-Up might be running out too soon. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Ah, oh, he still got hit by the heat pipe. Okay, so this was the stage that got retconned into a mansion level. Uh, in the original version, while this is the mansion world, it's not actually mansion-themed in the slightest. That's why half of these are graveyard levels, and then this one's mansion themed, and it looks pretty sick. I kind of wish they did it for one more stage, honestly. Crash KO lot going on. Okay. He's playing it safe. He's waiting for the Chrome Power Up because, again, no checkpoints in these boss fights. It's insanely... It's insanely terrifying. 
I might add, very, very much terrifying. <laughs> Luckily, Crash K actually recovering that. That was pretty intense. In the level of sunglasses in, in this uh, creepy catacomb stages, there's a little bit of small optimizations you can do by grabbing onto some of these gargoyles. Uh, it's really, really finicky. So you might see him go for some of them, but I doubt he'd go for all of them. Uh, you could also do that that I did not know was a thing. <laughs> Excuse me. I did not know we can butt bounce on. This is one of the ones I'm talking about. Nice. Well done. It's a little finicky because it's uh it's kind of like embedded into walls and surrounded by invisible walls too. It's really just bleh, but well enough practice. You can definitely get it down. Okay, Crash K entering Ghostly Garden. Again, Crash K doing a very good job of well, maybe not surpassing sunglasses in this in this first race. Definitely not uh definitely doing a good job of staying close. And we still got a, we still got a big final boss to worry about. This boss will be uh, a big decider. If uh, if one of them die far enough into the boss, they'll lose a lot of time, upwards of like three minutes. And uh, there's a lot of risk involved. Okay, so the first level, uh, sunglasses, uh, well, the last level of the match in the world. There's two skips that we can, uh, that are in this level that you have to, that you have to die to do, but luckily sunglasses, uh, life count is still good that he likely does not need to worry about it. Uh, so the first one is an apple. Uh, now it's not that we're going to be skipping the apple. It's more so the, uh, death that would save the time. So... You're going to need to get that melon, but in order to get that melon, you need to hit that switch right there behind that apple door. So he's going to grab this checkpoint, and then he's going to grab the apple at the end of this area, and then he's going to jump off and die. And that way, you just do another death warp. It's not a big time save, but it saves a couple seconds. The next one upcoming for the melon is a little bit more of a bigger deal, because you saw like this like little mini switch puzzle thing in that bottom area. So he's going to open this apple door, press the button. He's going to go downstairs. There's going to be a melon in the background that he's going to be jumping towards that usually would be built by several platforms by the puzzle that I mentioned. And if he gets it, he should just be able to get it. And then he'd fall off and die. No problem at all. Well done. And then he'd be able to open the gate. Again, not crazy huge time saves in this game, but it is a pretty big deal in a race setting especially that mellow one that mellow one's a lot more uh, of a bigger time save than the apple one that i mentioned earlier all right sunglasses is on his way to talk man so talk a lot going on in this fight there's gonna be three phases first phase he's going to be just in his normal form however he's going to be jetpacking towards you the name of the game is just to keep him by the edge and damage him as much as possible to get the phase going as fast as possible. The second phase is a little bit more of a rougher time. Uh, because he's going to be in his metal suit. And uh, the game will give you the metal suit at a specific time. And uh, you can one cycle the phase with one chrome ball power up. But it's pretty tight. So we'll see if he does it in one chrome ball or two. Because remember, you can only damage chrome ball enemies with a chrome ball yourself. So this first part of the second phase, you're just going to be waiting. And then the chrome ball will show up when he's spinning out, when he has the whole cannon fire segment. Then a chrome ball will drop. Grab the chrome ball when he's back down from it. Because you can grab it way earlier. But obviously, you don't want to do that. You want to wait to get as much time as possible. And then you just hit him as fast as possible for hopefully getting it in one cycle. So we're going to see how he does here. 
And it saves a lot of time to get this one cycle. I was going to do it here. Nice. Not dying. Nice. Well done, sunglasses. All right, so final phase. Uh, there's so, uh, there's two feet that he has that uh, have three hit points each. You need to collapse one of them to knock him down and then hit his head. And then that's the last phase. However, there's a lot of hitboxes going on and his body moving creates some jank. So it's pretty easy to die here. Let's hope he does not. Nice. Well done. Climb up the back here. Boom. Now you got to repeat that three times and talk me is down. Remember, no checkpoints during boss fights. Unfortunately, you can't do this. One of the first things that we tried. <laughs> it would have been awesome, but we can't. <laughs> Namco. Okay, so Sunglasses is basically done with this fight. Uh, she just needs to do this last quick time event that is literally impossible to fail. Uh, but you can mash through it to get a faster quick time event. Nice. Well done, sunglasses, for the first race of the best of three. Crash K is still doing really good. He's still in the he's in the last of the mansion uh world. He's still again, this whole race, he's been tailing sunglasses this whole time. Hopefully in the next race, hey, maybe he will stick to uh maybe he will actually pull it through and get a good early game to push him forward. Or maybe one of these bosses can screw one of them over. You never know with this game. Oh, that was a brutal death. I believe Crash K is just, we're just going to move forward into the next one. Oh, never mind. He's still growing. Okay. Uh, he got it. Nice. Yeah, low 52 is really good. Good time. Okay. Crash K is on his way to talk, man. I don't know if Crash K is Crash K going or not. I guess he's. I guess he is. Okay, we're doing Talkman. Yeah, I wasn't sure. He was like, "Do we continue? Do we not?" <laughs>
After this, we still got a potential two races coming up, guys, so be sure to stay tuned. Uh, if you just missed it, uh, this is Grand Finals of the Pac-Man World Repack Any Percent 2022-23 tournament. Uh, if you were not here for the first race, do not worry. If you stick around, I will be explaining the mechanics of the game and other things as the race progresses into the other races as well. So do not fret if you have if you're looking at this yellow sphere spin dashing around at the speed of sound and you're like what the heck is that that looks pretty cool don't worry all will be explained Nice job, Crash K. Getting the second phase one cycle as well. Nice job, Crash K. Both of them getting first try uh, Talkmans. That's awesome. Okay. So, stay tuned with us for one moment, and we'll get the second race of the best of three underway. Stay tuned. Alright, we're back. We are back to game two of... Pac-Man World Repack, any percent. All right, so if you're still, if you just stopped by and you have no idea what's going on, we're running a tournament for Pac-Man World Repack, which is a remake of the Pac-Man World on the original PlayStation. Uh, so right now, this is a very movement-intensive game. Uh, the main mechanic that they're going to be using right here is the Revel. It's the spin dash looking thing. They run in place and then let go of the button and you boost. Uh, they're going to be using it to scale ramps. It's the fastest form of ground movement in the game. Uh, another thing you're going to be seeing is the butt bounce. They're going to be using that to obtain a lot of higher elevations. There's a lot of ledges that you can't reach normally without it. And uh, obviously also for killing enemies, it's a big deal. Uh, next thing is the uh, flutter jump. Uh, in normal mode for the game, you can hold it for one second and it'll extend your jump and uh, maintain height. Uh, they'll use it to cross larger gaps that they wouldn't normally be able to reach. And uh, it's extremely versatile, so you might use uh, so use it for also for safety reasons. That can happen. So in these first couple levels, there's nothing too much to note. It's mainly going to be a lot of uh, navigating around uh, pretty non-dangerous enemies, like the little barrels there. Uh... There's going to be a couple door warps, uh, sunglasses skips one of them. I'm not sure if Crash K does. They'll use uh, barrels and things like that for like that ledge grab. Crash K is also going to be doing it. There he goes.
Also notice that they'll be using a lot of the terrain to uh, use as ramps. They do this in a number of amount of locations. And uh, also, another thing that you're going to see is the chrome power-up. Uh, with it, you can sink to the bottom of the water, uh, and you can break chests underwater. And it's also the only way to kill chrome enemies as well. Okay, so the next level coming up is kind of like actually a little difficult. Uh, you gotta worry a lot about a these cannon cycles where they, they flap their doors open and then you use them as platforms. Uh, it's really easy to get stuck on something like an enemy bonking you or something damaging you and then the cycles completely go off. Earlier, this caused a little bit of trouble for both runners, but hopefully today in this second race, it treats them well. This is actually kind of a nuisance of a level, both speedrun and casual play. You're also going to see a variety of fruit and uh, tokens lying around. Uh, the fruit is just points uh, and for opening certain doors locked behind said fruit. Uh, you're not going to really see it come up much. It's going to be a lot more prevalent later in the run. Uh, some levels have later levels have more locked uh, gates behind fruit. In the starting levels, though, you definitely want to avoid the tokens in all these levels because it forces you to play a whole slot machine mini game for more points for more lives. <laughs> Ooh, oh, nice save from sunglasses. That was really close. Uh, so you're going to see them try their best to avoid it. The fruit is not as big of a deal if they grab a few here and there, but it is slower by a little bit. The tokens is like the really big deal as that's actually seconds. You're also going to see them pass by all the friends, poor Puka there, the homie getting locked up and staying there. Uh, if you've played the original game, you might remember that you are required to save all of them uh, to get pa to unlock Talkman's level. Even if you manage to glitch around the loading, uh, glitch around the door to get into the loading zone, Talkman, uh, Talkman's loading zone actually does not load. Uh, but in this game, they've changed it dramatically. You do not need to rescue the friends to advance in the game. However, in the last fight, there are tremendous help uh, with health. If you get to a low enough health point total, uh, they will actually just come in and hand you a full refill. But obviously, these two are very experienced runners, and neither of them will be grabbing them. Uh, currently, Sunglasses is in the first boss, HMS Windbank. Uh, this first section is just navigating around barrels not too big of a deal this current phase right now is a scripted fight where you have to bounce uh you have to bounce the cannibals back at him uh this first phase is scripted the second phase however is actually heavily rng based so we're going to see how the runners adapt to it uh if you play the original game you might remember that you can actually bounce several cannibals back at him and they'll actually count towards damaging him uh, that does not apply in this game. As you see, Sunglasses just shot two at him. It only did one damage, because uh, Namco does not like fun. Sunglasses is currently on the second phase of the fight.
Crash King having a lot better of a start uh, compared to his previous run. Hopefully that means he gets to stay even closer to Sunglasses than he was even earlier. Maybe even get past him. Who knows? It was a pretty close race, all things considered, last game. So I'm excited to see where this goes. So in the last race, uh, Crash K went to the space levels after the after this fight, and Sunglasses went to the mines. Sunglasses still going to the mines. I'm curious to see if Crash K still goes to space levels. He probably will. Uh, the mines levels are filled with a lot of traps in them, and it's really easy to take a lot of damage in these levels. They're also pretty long as far as the regular length of levels goes, especially the second one in the mines levels, which is essentially a uh, hodgepodge of two different levels together as one of them was cut from the final game. Nice job, Crash K, finishing. Alright, Crash K definitely still going to the space levels. So the space levels, uh, the main difference is here is that a lot of, uh, it's a little bit more platform heavy than the ruins levels. There's a lot more uh, platforms that tilt and move and a lot more like these gates that block off things. So he's going to be going out of his way to hit switches to activate certain parts of the stage. Much like what Sunglass is about to do here behind this banana door. Being said, though, in I mentioned earlier in the first race that Sunglasses could be going for all these extra lives for more safety with some of those levels. However, he is not going to as he is doing pretty exceptional. He did it the first time and he's not doing it this time either. Which is what people that tend to go for the space levels first, they tend to do it for the extra lives and stuff like that for the later levels. Sunglass is doing a very clean job navigating this level. This level has a lot of weird movement to it, at least to, in my opinion. It's a little bit uncomfortable, the movement. Uh, mainly because obstacle cycles and the level layout in general is just a little bit annoying. Uh, you're going to notice also that uh, Sunglasses will be spamming the swim button sometimes. Or he'll just swim up. <laughs> um, uh, spamming the swim button, though, even though you're not rising, is actually still a little bit faster than just coasting along the bottom.
Actually, uh, with that hit from sunglasses, it's a good time to mention. Uh, in this game, you have a animation for getting hit. Now, when you get hit on the ground, it's not that big of a deal. It's not the end of the world. However, when you get hit airborne, you do the animation and then you just sink like a rock. And it's extremely easy to die that way. So these runners are going to be very careful with how they move in the air because it's just not very safe. Upcoming on Sunglasses screen, we have Anubis Rex. The second boss, or second slash third, however you want to think about it. The first part of this boss is a mummy in, uh, like, in a first-person camera view of the mummy. Not you, because why would you want to see where you're going? Uh, chasing you. And now, this level, it's, this part of the stage, it's important to note that, uh, a lot of these spear hitboxes are a lot bigger than they look. Both in the original version and in this version of the game. But the camera doesn't keep up with you, so for sunglasses to navigate through most of these sections, he has to actually memorize what the level looks like. And then for the second part of this fight, uh, there is four helipads spread out throughout the stage that you have to revel on to uh, to break this barrier around the heart that uh, Anubis is guarding. And then uh, once you do that, you revel into it, and then that's one out of four phases. Each phase throws in more projectiles and more enemies, and each one just gets progressively more difficult. On Crash K's screen, he is going through the King Galaxian boss. Uh, the King Galaxian boss is also split up into two parts. The first part is a shmup version. Uh, it's kind of like a mini shmup slash very tame bullet hell, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, where you take down all the Galaga and then the Asteroids. It's a full-on auto-scroller, however you can get points. And there's also uh, social where it introduces you to the power-ups. The main one we want to pay attention to is the Power Pellet, which splits your shot into three separate shots. And with that, uh, you can use it to obviously clear the screen better. But also, he's going to be using it to shotgun... Uh, the boss later on because the boss itself is split into two parts uh there's going to be four eyes on the boss and you have to take each one down and then after you take one down you have to shoot its stinger and it switches to a different kind of bullet hell phase and then once you do enough damage to stinger it reverts back to the quad eye phase um and then you just rinse and repeat so you're what he's going to be doing is he's going to be grabbing the power pellet from the stinger phase and grabbing it late enough that he uses it during the stinger part and then bring it into the eye part to shock on one of the eyes and then it will make that part go faster. Uh, that was a mouthful, but I promise you it makes sense when you watch it. Over on Sunglasses side, he's doing... Uh, he's getting there. Okay, he's fine. He's fine. Uh, I do want to make sure to note to everybody that there is no checkpoints during these, fight, uh, during these fights. So yes, during this uh, early sections, yes, there are checkpoints. But during the actual fights themselves, if you die at any point, you start the whole fight over. So it's actually extremely risky if you want to play like really well that you do not die. It's extremely important that you do not die because you can lose minutes. So... He just, uh, congratulations to Sunglasses for finishing the Anubis Rex fight, uh, for the Anubis Rex fight, I'm sorry. Crash K currently doing the Stinger phase of the King Galaxian fight, and then it's broken up into this small shmup version. That power pellet right there is what he's going to be looking for, so he's going to grab it, he's going to use it on the Stinger fight, and then he's going to use it to shotgun one of the eyes, which means just getting really, really close so all the three shots hit them at the same time. And then he's just going to do that for the next three phases. Just keep in mind, though, as these phases go on, uh, the the amount of projectiles on screen do just get a lot worse. So it's actually extremely easy to take a lot of unnecessary damage in these fights. Crash Gay, doing a great job, though, dodging. Dodging, shooting. Gonna use it. Shock on the other eye. Nicely done. So during this part of the fight, uh, his patterns do change, but not enough to really impact the fight because with the shotgun, you do it so f you knock out the face so fast that the new attacks don't even come out. So, uh, just a quick tally up. Um, Sunglasses is still currently in the lead. Not by too much, though. By about a stage, maybe a little bit more. 
a crash guy. Very good King Galaxian fight. Okay, time for uh, Crash Guys to at the Ruins level. That's what I was talking about on Crash K's side with the uh, getting hit in the air. He got hit in the air, immediately sunk down into lava. Oh, these frontage doing very clean jobs. Both of them are definitely doing a good job of maneuvering around the stage. Uh, they're doing a lot of like really small time savers here and there, which is just goes to demonstrate their skill in this game. Sunglasses entering King Galaxian. Once again, same thing. We got the early shmup section. Uh, keep in mind for the power pellet power up. And then uh, we have to worry about the actual fight soon. It's so loud. Oh my goodness. <laughs> scared me. <laughs> Crash K in Manic Mines, doing a good job of climbing up these stairs, avoiding a lot of the obstacles, uh, going actually a bit smooth in his Crisis Cavern run through. Remember, Crash K may be behind, but he's definitely not out of this race yet. He's, de he's shown that he's very capable of keeping up. It's just anybody's game. Bosses in this game are very much run killers. They cost two minutes at a time. Uh, we have to factor in pressure. This is grand finals after all. So if Crash K wins this best of three, we get a bracket reset in which they're going to have to fight again. Or Sunglasses could win the best of three, and then that would be the end of the tournament. We shall see. If you're just dropping by, this is the Pac-Man World Repack. It's a remake of the PlayStation 1 Pac-Man World game. And uh, the tournament has been going ongoing for a bit. Uh, this is Grand Finals. We're doing a best of three. 
And uh, if you played the original and you have no idea what you're looking at, this looks very different. I don't blame you. There's a lot that changed, but a lot that also remains true to the original game. And if you're looking to pick up this game, it's available on all major platforms. Okay, so... So we have Sunglasses currently in the main part of the actual King Galaxian fight. Crash Gate entering the first part of the Anubis Rex fight. Nice job, Sunglasses. Excellent job, sunglasses. That was a really good King Galaxian fight. Both these runners are playing very well right now. So, sunglasses is on their way to the funhouse stages. Now, the funhouse stages are primarily uh, tight platforming based. So you're going to see a lot of rotating and moving platforms. Uh, they're all designed to obviously make it more difficult, but no problem for sunglasses. Should be able to get through them nice and easy. Crash K, second phase of Anubis, not too far behind. So you're going to see uh, Sunglasses is using the Ruffle to go up a lot of these like half steps. So you're going to look over here like that. The Ruffle is capable of doing that uh, throughout the game. Uh, it's just very rare situations where you'd use it. That is the probably the biggest example of where it gets used. Crash K on the final phase of Anubis. Let's hope he uh, plays good. Remember, there are no checkpoints and bosses. So if he dies, uh, he has to start the whole thing over. And that is horrible for obvious reasons. Which will play a very important factor later in the run. Nice job, Crash K. Okay, Crash K is only a level behind Sunglasses, which is what we saw uh, happening in the last game. In the last game, it was a very similar situation where around this point, Crash K was just really a level behind. So it looks like he's making up some of the time that he lost earlier with deaths like in that Crisis Cavern. Let's see what he does. Hopefully he pulls through. Remember guys, this is a best of three, so... If Crash K uh, wins this race, he has another shot at taking sunglasses down to losers in which he has a shot of winning the whole tournament. So if he could pull this through, he's going to be in a great position. Sunglasses, that strat terrifies me. Oh my goodness.
Nice job, Crash K, finishing the first level of the clan level. Uh, the clan stages. Again, Crash K is not doing a bad job at all of keeping up. Sunglass is going for the strat right here. Uh, it doesn't save too much time, but it's pretty neat. Uh, I'd say it's going, uh, you have to go through the barrel and then around again. Did not make the cycle over, so I was going to have to wait a bit here. Nice done. Nicely done. Ooh, that was a rough death. Luckily, it was right there with the checkpoint, but still. Now, the big thing about Spin Dizzy is that there's a lot of switches that uh, make platforms spin. However, like what Sunglasses did there, if you just skip the switch that makes all these platforms uh, skin... Uh, Wow, brain. If you, <laughs> if you skip the switch that makes all these platforms spin, uh, you actually just get an easier time navigating through them. But also, it's just faster. Crash came missing that jump. That's costly. He seems he quickly recovered from it though, thankfully. Let's see if he goes for this skip. Nah, he's just not opting for it. I don't blame him. It doesn't save too much time. It is pretty nice though. Uh the issue is that sometimes it's kind of inconsistent or you'd have to wait, kinda of like how sunglasses did, and if you have to wait long enough, it just kind of defeats the point of it entirely. But he's not making the cycle either. Uh, it's not too bad. Hopefully he uh, is able to catch up more. Sunglasses, though, is currently flying through this. He's going to grab this ledge right here, bounce over. Nice. That skips having to hit an extra switch and go all the way around. Bounce. Bounce. Nice. Alright, time for Clown Prey. So now this is a pretty, uh, it's not a crazy, uh, it's not insanely difficult. However, there's a lot of, uh, weird turns that can kind of mess you up. Uh, right now, the main thing that you gotta know is that there's a gauge on the right, or on the left, I can't read. Uh, there's a gauge on the left that once it fills, he can do a boost, which is he's going to be using in specific locations to get the most out of it, primarily in uh, ways he can go as straight as possible. Uh, then there is power pellets. The power pellets make you go a bit faster, and they also make you bump into the clowns, which uh, kind of get them out of your way easier. And you can also bump into the bombs without getting damaged by them, which obviously negates you having to make really awkward turns around them uh sunglasses in the last race got i believe the high 129 so let's see if he can still hit that sub 130 over on crash cases side he's on the latter half of uh not even half he's actually almost done with spin dizzy he's not too far behind either
Nice. Crash cake and that skip. He didn't do the strat for waiting for the plane enemy. Ah, oh, he almost got that. Yeah. He might have just not thought about it for a second there. He did get that, though. Nicely done. Nerves. A little bit slower than what he did before, but still a very good time. A one a low one thirty is still really good. All right, Crash K starting Clown Pre on his side. Sunglasses is still not done with Clown Pre before uh, Crash K gets in here. Uh, Crash K is definitely closer to Sunglasses than when he was last face, which means that there's even more help for him this time. Let's see what he does. I believe in the last race he got a 133, I want to say. I want to say it was about a 133, so let's see what he gets this time. So, uh, factory level. So, with these levels, the main thing that the designers decided to do was just put steam everywhere. Uh, if there's a whole, like, foot difference between one steam and then another steam uh they're just gonna slap one in the middle because why not there's just a lot of ways to take damage in these stages and uh all of them are pretty bad he pipes also a lot of damage uh even ones in the background can cause a lot of damage which could be actually a problem uh for when he cuts corners Yeah. So there's just a lot of like little time savers in these stages. Since there's so many uh hitboxes though, you gotta be really careful. Uh and then these really annoying spark plug enemies. I don't even know what they're called, but they don't really deserve to have their name recognized. They are actually just nuisances with really, really big hitboxes. Um Yeah, this is this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Nice health backup. Yeah, Sunglasses doing still doing a very good job of maintaining his lead and not playing it too risky. Alex still grooving along here on Clown Pre. Still doing a pretty good job. Uh, I can't exactly tell what pace he's on, but he's almost done and he's still a pretty good pace uh this might be like a 131 if i had to guess or 32 never mind just 33 <laughs> i don't know this game what'd you guys expect ah uh, sunglasses is missing this little skip here it's not a very it's a lot harder but it saves like way too much time because there's this weird platform that goes up and down that you do by doing a uh a switch puzzle and i say puzzle with like 19 pairs of quotes because it's really really nothing special <laughs> all right crash k entering the factory world and he is about a level and a half behind sunglasses at the moment Remember, there's a lot of easy ways to lose time in these uh, levels just due to how taking damage slows you down and also just due to how easy it is to take damage in these levels. Uh, coming up here, though, Sunglasses is going to take this Chrome Ball and he's going to run as fast as he can with it because upcoming is a water section that he wants to make sure he drops down with the Chrome Ball in order to save time floating down because he descends, Pac-Man descends incredibly slow without it, so it saves actually a lot of time
So, Sunglasses jumped over that checkpoint because he grabbed the checkpoint earlier, right next to this dropping platform. And so he's going to do a death warp as to not, uh, just to save a bit of time going back. It saves a couple seconds and also saves the risk of taking unnecessary damage as there's just a lot of steam vents over there. They are currently in the same level. Sunglasses is almost out of the level, so it's still kind of like a whole level behind. Uh, but still, Crash K is doing a very good job of sticking behind Sunglasses. This is still totally possible if uh, Sunglasses makes a severe mistake. Crash K could just slip right past him, and in this game, that is 100% possible. Do not count Crash K out yet, because he's definitely still got potential to take this race. So over here in the next level, uh, down the tubes, Sunglasses is going to be taking a crumble, and we're going to be going through the water, except we're not going to be going through entirely. Uh, a lot of this level is cut out because the original design intent of this level was for you to go grab a bell really deep in the pipes. Uh, for a key to save your friend, because obviously without a friend in the original version, without your friends, you couldn't beat the game. But in this version, because you don't need to save the friends to beat the game, uh, they're completely optional. This level just kind of becomes really, really short for no real reason. Uh, it's, it's really bizarre, because this level loses like half of its design or more without the need to save friends. So this level turns incredibly short. Look at that. He's already done with it. What? <laughs> he bumped it twice. Ah, uh, gotta love it. What Namco game is there without some drink? Alright, so Sunglasses is now heading into Chrome Keeper. It's a level that you're meant to grab a uh, chrome for and then hit the chrome keeper. However, what Sunglasses is going to be doing is he's going to be jumping into the heat pipes, hitting him once, and then backing up to grab the chrome ball to hit him uh, two extra times. So you kind of skip having to wait as much for the chrome ball. Nice. So the next phase is going to begin, but uh, Sunglass is going to be right there with the Chrome Ball. So he's just going to be able to smack him immediately. Like so. So Sunglass is currently looking for health. There it is. Okay, good. He didn't die there. Good thing. Uh, because, again, no checkpoints near boss fights. So, a lot of this stuff has serious risk of it. Um, upwards of minutes. Ooh, Crash K. That was a really bad death. Crash K on his last life. Hopefully he doesn't die. Please play a little bit safe. There you go. He's got that extra one up. Alright, he should be good. Well done, Sunglasses. Finishing Chrome Keeper. He's off to the last world of the game. The Mansion World. So the main thing with this mansion world is that there is a lot of platforming involved in these levels, along with uh, the the world that has generally the most fruit gates in it. Ooh, that's a ooh, crash cane. No. <laughs> Come on, crash cane, you got this.
Hopefully he at least finishes this level so that if he decides to do a death abuse, it's in a level that you can just start over fresh. But definitely do not want a game over because game overing forces you to restart the whole level after going through two loading zones. So definitely do not want to go through there. Sunglass is just kind of playing out of his mind today, though. Doing an excellent job navigating this stage. How did both runners get it so that when you bonk the statue, you just don't get it? What the heck? How did that happen to both of them? <laughs> okay, so Crash Gang on his way to Chromekeeper. He's probably not going to take a death in this stage, as taking a death anywhere just kind of restarts the whole thing anyways. I doubt he'd take a death intentionally, but if he does, it'd be after this, not before this. Sunglass is almost done with the stage right here. So now the level that was uh, retconned to be an actual mansion, because in the original game there were all like catacombs uh, and all uh, graveyard themed. In the next level, creepy catacombs, it's actually uh, got retconned into looking like a mansion, and it looks really cool. It was a very nice surprise to see that. There is this game's not perfect, but I definitely appreciate the level Ken Namco put into it. Uh, oh no, Crash K, please don't die. <laughs> I beg of you. Don't die in the last phase. No! No, Crash K. Oh, that's brutal. Oh, man. That's really unfortunate. So I'm telling you, it's the it's the nerves and the boss fights. They're really big swingers in these races, and unfortunately, it got Crash Guy. Nice, Crash K finishing Chrome Keeper. It's still really unfortunate though that he died. Sunglasses onto Grave Danger, the last level of the mansion stages before Talkman. And uh, in this stage, there's going to be two separate skips that they're going to be aiming for. Uh, both of them regarding fruit. One of them is pretty minor. It's just a death warp, much like what we saw in uh, Under Pressure. 
uh, with that death warp uh, that he did where he skipped the checkpoint, died next to that, and died and spawned next to that platform that fell down. He's going to be doing a very similar thing for the first skip for the apple, but for the second skip for the melon, he's going to actually be grabbing a melon off in the distance that would normally be accessible by doing a small uh, button puzzle. And skipping the button puzzle saves quite a bit of time and you just get to go for it. And this level is really short because of it. A level really is not actually that long, even without the skips. So upcoming is the melon one. Let's see if Sunglass gets it first try. Easy. Easy every time. So, Talkman fight is upcoming. Uh, so now, for the Talkman fight, uh, there's three phases to it. The first phase is just him in uh, with his Buzz Lightyear wings charging at you. And it's just a matter of getting him to the edge where he just kind of stays there. And you just get to wail on him. The next phase is actually a little bit... Is really the biggest problem for time saving. So, he's going to turn metal. And what he's going to do is he's going to jump after bothering you for a little bit. He's going to go up and uh, fire a bunch of cans at you. And then a crow ball is eventually going to drop. And then once that crumb ball drops, uh, he's going to wait for Talkman to get close to him. So that he can do essentially what the first phase did. Where it was just wailing on him and getting him near the edge to keep him there. Except with the crow ball timer. And then uh, you can one cycle this phase. However, it is a little, it is a bit difficult. But hopefully he gets it. Let's see if he gets it here. Nice, well done. So next, he's going to damage one of the feet and have him drop. And then bounce on his head, and he's going to repeat that three times. What makes this uh, fight kind of hard, though, is that there's a lot of ways to easily die. But it should be no problem for sunglasses here. Crash K doing a pretty good job navigating these stages, though he has low health. But hopefully he's a little bit careful. Well, what was happening there? <laughs> sunglasses. All right, so last part is just a quick time event, but Sunglasses takes it, wins the tournament. Uh, and is this a is this a world record? This might be a this might be an any percent world record for grand finals. Is it, this is absolutely an eighty percent world record. The sub 51 in grand finals? Oh my goodness. <laughs> wow. 
Wait, it's a damn... Yeah, it's a 50. So 51. That was the first ever 50 for the game during grand finals of the tournament. Oh my goodness. It was absolutely a new world record. The previous world record was 5130. So he beat his PB by 36 seconds in a race. What a way to top off this tournament. Oh my goodness. Sunglasses. Is your Pac-Man World Repack 80% champion? Wow. Clean 2-0. Impressive showing throughout this whole tournament. He hasn't lost at all. Insane. GG's sunglasses. GG's to you both. That being said, though, also great showing to Crash K. Definitely keeping up with the best runner of the game by far right now. Definitely an insane runner on his own part. And has been doing a great job throughout the tournament. Even upsetting psionics at one point, which was the proposed third place finish or second place finish of the tournament. Really impressive. All right, so we're going to get these two in here hopefully for a tournament. Sunglasses OP, please nerf. Hello, who do we have in here? Hello, Crash K. How's it going? Um... Can you hear me now? Hi, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I was having some problems with the mic. Okay, that's okay. So, hi, how are you feeling about the race? I'm sorry about that. I feel really bad about that Chrome Keeper death because you were really, really close yeah. the whole time. Yeah, that was that was that was in that was a decent, pretty decent run. So until Chrome Keeper and yeah, that happened, and yeah, it's fine. Um, and welcome to sunglasses. Yeah, it was an insane race. The thing was that all sunglasses was ahead throughout the whole, both of the whole races. Crush K, you were 90% of the time, max like a level and a half behind. Mm. You were keeping up the whole time. <laughs> so there's always a glimmer of hope. You guys kept it really nice. Yeah, yeah. What's up? Hey, sunglasses! Congratulations on one winning yeah, the tournament. congratulations! And to the record, just casual that's, fifty mid tournament. That's an insane world record, to be honest. Yeah, can't believe it. Can't believe it. Damn. How are you feeling? Congrats! I was dying the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> like I got out, out of pirates like one second ahead. I was uh, I was like, oh, that's nice, neat. Then the cavern, I was ahead by 7 seconds and I was getting like, oh, this is getting real. And I just didn't make any mistake, any big mistake. Yeah, no, 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 no. like the off the top of my head, the biggest time save that I can think of that you lost was like waiting for the barrel and barrel blasts. But like, I'm trying to like piece together what mistakes you made and it was like just really clean. Oh, uh, where? I think you waited like two seconds for like the barrel to turn for like the stovetop part in Barrel Blast at the end. 
Oh, that's kind of intended. We, we got to do it at, at a very oh, specific yeah. spot. Yeah. Actually, Factory was, uh, a bit was my worst world. I lost like 15 there to my PB. You still lost 15 seconds there? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Dang. Yeah. So, so there's still time to improve. <laughs> yeah, there is no, absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. You're me. done. I absolutely <laughs> done with, with any percent. Oh yeah, you've been attacking oh, good ending. Did yeah. you just get like good ending world record like today or yesterday? Yeah, yesterday. Well, today kind yeah. of. Yeah. <laughs> like at 4 a.m. <laughs> Sunglasses. Is you are having some insane runs too. Yeah. Oh. So yeah, that that happened somehow. <laughs> wow. Impressive showing. GG's, both GG's, you, really. man. You guys both played really, really well. It was an awesome race. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, congratulations thank you, thank you. to winning for the tournament. Thank you all for participating, whether you were here in the stream or not. I appreciate all you guys participating. Hopefully, uh, soon we get another tournament going, depending on what game we choose. I have no idea what we're going to do yet, but we'll figure it out. Uh, if you would like to stay updated on what game we, uh, the next Pac-Man game tournament, uh, be sure to join the Discord if you want to learn the game. Uh, we have plenty of people here willing to help you get started on the game. And uh, yeah, go follow the runners. They've been doing a great job playing this game, playing other games as well. Thank you to uh, Speed Gaming for letting us host this whole tournament. As always, they've been a great job. They've been doing a great job and bringing light to more speed games that don't really see it. It's been awesome working with them. So yeah, for the tourney, it was pretty fun. No, I'm yeah, glad it was plenty of fun. So uh, just a heads up for everyone. Up next is going to be the Zelda One randomizer community race. So that'd be awesome. Be sure to stick around and watch that. And uh, is there any? Uh, is there any going? Is there any questions, comments you guys have before we wrap this up? Not much. Uh, I, you, I I will I would like to say just thank you to my friends for watching me play this tournament. It was it was really fun to play the tournament and I had a, f a few friends watching me. So yeah, shout out to the to the GG gang. Awesome. Well, yeah. Sorry for making you run against that. <laughs> Yeah, that was insane. Run. Still, that was yeah. insane. Run, dude. Congrats. Yeah. 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 And shout out to anyone who has played this game and any runner that inspired me to get uh, the world record. I didn't expect to get this far when I got it back in August at all. So thanks, everyone. Also, shout out to Namco. Thank you for giving us a new world game. So, Pac Man World Finally. for when? Eyes. Come on, Namco, do your thing. Uh, but yeah, if you guys want to pick up this game, it's all available on all current platforms. And uh, yeah, we're all done here. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching and sticking with us throughout this whole tournament. Thank you for all the participants. Congratulations to Sunglasses for not only getting world record, but for also finishing the tournament and winning. And uh, yeah, I appreciate all of you. Have a wonderful day.